Hey everyone, this is Ben back with you in the Midwest Model Shop. In today's episode, we're going to go ahead and focus on the rigging for the USS Missouri. Uh, first thing we're going to do though is actually wrap up the whale boats that we started on last time, just touch on a couple details there. Then we'll go ahead and we'll start with the rigging process. We'll go ahead and do the uh, lines that were handled by uh, crew members and then of course the antenna wires that ran across everywhere. I had a lot of trouble coming up with accurate resources and references. Basically, I couldn't find anything online that was definitive. Also, because of the various iterations of the ship and reconfiguration throughout the years, yearly and monthly, uh, it's difficult to find anything that's like definitive. So basically, I took photographs that were as easy to see as possible, referenced them, and that's what we put up on the ship as best as we could. I'm gonna use a combination of Easy Line, which you'll see a picture of in the video, and stretch sprue. If you don't know how to make stretch, stretch sprue, sorry, uh, I go ahead and show you how to do that in this video as well. Um, that's it. Oh, I put up some signals. Uh, extra points if you comment below with deciphering them. And otherwise, feel free to comment. Uh, we're not done yet. There's room to add more rigging, uh, but this is the bulk of it. And the reason I did it at this point is because it's in the middle, top middle part of the superstructure. And a lot of the places where like the anti-aircraft guns still aren't installed, I can rest my hands on them and then use my tweezers or whatever I need to do to manipulate stuff. So that's why I kind of chose to do that at this point. All right, that's all I've got. Hope you're all doing well. Let's get into the build. All right, back at it. Uh, we're gonna straighten out our whale boats here. So thanks to the comments online last time around, folks pointed out to me that these lines dropping down here are actually rope and they're referred to as monkey ropes because that's probably what you look like when you're hanging on to them but essentially the idea was when this uh, whale boat's being lowered down into the sea you want something to hang on to in case there's a little bit of a mishap so these are actually supposed to be the color of rope so we're going to go ahead and get this sorted out on both sides and then we'll give the whale boat a little bit of wash and same over here with the um, I, I think this is a hydraulic equipment to operate the davits to bring the whole thing up and down. So we'll get those washed up and press on here. All right, here's the whale boat all wrapped up. Uh, we put a little bit of wash on here, same with the equipment on the back, and I think it's looking pretty nice. So right about now we'll go ahead and uh, press on up here, start working on the rigging and everything that goes on the antennas. Let's see if we can figure that out. All right, so we want to start with the antennas up here. and. This is going to be difficult to see. It's probably the best shot. I went ahead and dug up some pictures the best I could. This is from uh, 1944 when she's under the old uh, paint scheme coming out of training. Um, but you can see here where the lines are at for the signal flags. You can also see the high tension wires. I don't know if they're high tension. That's probably not the right word. These are definitely HF antenna wires, high frequency antennas. And then some of this is rigging for flag, signal flag stuff. So I'm not going to be able to do this perfectly. And I have another image here that I took to kind of get uh, the back mass. And you can kind of make out in the video here what's going on. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty difficult to see, but it's good enough for what I need to do. Um, and then in this photo, you can also see the two antenna whips up in the middle right there, which are those two right there. Uh, this was late wars after 45. Uh, I don't have the year on this one. It's The issue is there's enough here for me to extrapolate and do the best I can to determine how the antennas should go. The issue is where do they attach at the base? Like where on the ship do these things secure? And there's just, I'm just not finding any really good photographs of that. So uh, we're going to use these to make the best decisions we can to try and get the most realistic representation and adequate and satisfactory representation of uh, all of that on here so that it at least looks good. Uh, so let's go ahead and start that process. All right, we've started our rigging up here and I wanted to try and show you uh, how I'm doing this. So first of all, I'm using this stuff, Fine Easy Lime. Uh, I bought this a long, long time ago and basically it's a, it's a very thin, stretchable thread that is pretty easy to glue, usually. The key is to have brand new super glue if you can. So I'm gonna take 
some super glue on the toothpick. I'm going to touch this area right up here on the top. I've pre cut a, a length of this. I'm going to use my tweezers. Hopefully, you can see here. And just touch the end right into that CA glue and let it hang there. Hopefully, you can make that out. See that? We'll change the angle here if we need to and let that set up and then what we're going to do is put another drop of CA glue right here and we'll stretch it down just a little bit and let it uh, glue into place. Okay so here's our little piece of easy line and it just stuck to my whoop, stuck to my uh, super glue but you can see it's super super stringy and grabs pretty easily so we'll just touch a little more glue right to that corner there and then very carefully tweezers put just a little bit of tension on it and touch it to that point where the glue is at. Pull it past a little bit and that's it. It's secure. So now you have to cut off the bottom there. There's a couple different ways you can do that. Um, you can pull the easy line down and snip it but you gotta be careful because of the tension created on the photo etch and that's what you get though. It snaps right back up into position, looks nice and sharp and then you have your little three lines. Um, the only thing you gotta watch out for with this uh, this easy line is that it is not okay to use with ultraviolet light or sunlight. It'll dissolve somehow so keep that in mind when you're displaying it. So but let's go ahead and press on here and get some more of this done. Okay so here's what we have installed so far, uh, I looked at my resources, so it actually seems like right up on top here there's supposed to be two little booms that come out and drop down on several of my pictures, and I was kind of surprised Pontos didn't include that, but that's okay. Uh, this line right here, I just ran down to the front of the funnel, I believe is actually supposed to be for raising flags. Then we have... Uh, lines coming off of the antenna right here going back up to the center hopefully that shows up and then our lines going down to the side right there from up on top I went ahead and slid in the tubs right here for the anti-aircraft guns that I haven't finished up yet because as best as I could tell, several antenna lines come from the outside edge here of uh, the lanyard or mast, whatever. I'm getting that word wrong right now because I'm trying to show this to you. But anyway, they go down and they connect right in here. And so, if you look at this with a straight line, the tub could potentially be in the way. And, and in my images, there's a little bit of slack actually coming from that point as they drape on up. Then obviously we have our lines coming for the signals uh, from the signal flat box right here up. Those would be taunt and on the inside. Uh, the lines going here would be on the outside, this edge. So if you haven't figured out already, I'm starting on the inside and working my way out. And now that I pretty much have these lines in position, these antennas, um, I'm going to start with running the lines towards the back that go in the middle here. I did see in that in World of Warships there are a ton of antenna lines that run from up here down to the front and they basically attach to the top of all the little antenna positions that you have up here. I'm trying to find reference photographs of the real ship doing that but I haven't had much luck yet because the black and white photographs are all kind of washed out so uh, yeah, so let's let's start. I think we're gonna start running things across here for the next part. All right, here are two of the high tension lines installed here on the starboard side, and I'm gonna go ahead and try my best to show you how we're gonna do this. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna start with gluing right to this point right here, and then over here. If we could see this, 
Yeah. Right in the end there, there's a little hole. I'm utilizing those rings. I don't know if you can see them if you look very closely right there, to run the easy line through and pull it tight. So let me go ahead and get the camera set up to try and show this process. Okay, so I'm starting off on this side by putting a little CA glue on the bottom of this piece protruding out from the yard arm. That's the word I've been trying to say this whole time. And I'm doing this because I think that cosmetically it works better. So then we're gonna take our piece of easy line. We're gonna come in here and stick most of it right up underneath. Just like that. And we're gonna let it set up for a moment. Then we'll shift back to the other side. All right, now here is the tricky part. I'm gonna grab a reasonable amount of thread, easy line, sorry, and fish it through that hole, just so like that, so you can pull it with your fingers. And all I'm trying to do, just, just barely get it taut, grab a little CA glue and touch that point. The CA glue, and we'll leave the tension on here. The CA glue leaves a little bit of a glossy finish right there, but that's okay because we touch it all up with flat black paint when we're done. And then same thing as before, pull it taut, get your scissors as close as you can, and cut it just like that. And I'll show you what it looks like. All right, uh, there's the three lines on this side port side and they run up here. Now I didn't utilize on um, the middle power line any of the points on the uh, photo etch. The reason for that is it didn't match any of my reference photos. So that's why they're secured right there. And then we gotta go ahead and duplicate that on the other side and you'll end up let's see if we can get this in focus here. This is what we're looking at. So we need three more on the other side. And they look pretty cool. So that's how we do that. Let's get the other ones done, pressing on. Okay, we've reached a juncture that we have to talk about. I have our six lines installed. Hopefully you can see them. And I've also installed the antenna lines that are dropping down uh, to the center of the ship. Now here's the thing. Let's take a look here horizontally. Notice right here we've got this easy line. It's not even very taut and it's pulling down quite a bit. In the back here I've got the other two. They're coming down just a little bit but not as far. Here's what I switched up. See that gray line right there? That is stretch sprue. I realized I needed something a little more taut and so I use stretch sprue. A lot of you are going to use stretch sprue anyway just to go ahead and do this uh, because you don't have easy line and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. The key is to making sure that the sprue is the same diameter as best you can as the easy line or doing it all the same. And of course someone right here has just said I don't know anything about stretch sprue. How do you make stretch sprue? Well let's show you. Okay, we're going to try and do this on camera. So the first thing you need is a candle or a torch, depending on the country you're in. Uh, this is uh, the candles that go inside of pumpkins that you use around Halloween time if you're here in the States. Stretch sprue. Sprue, this is a you know parts piece. Sprue is, is this chunk right here, and you can see I've cut some pieces out. Uh, get yourself some strength, straight lengths that are pretty free of anything else. Uh, get several. This takes some practice. Basically, you're going to hold it over the top of the flame about this far and rotate it and move it back and forth. And it's going to start to get gummy. And at a very critical point, oh, you just pull it apart. All right, so take your sprue, hold it over the flame, rotate it, and move it back and forth so you start heating the whole thing up semi-evenly with focus kind of right in the middle. Oh man, we got hot in the back there. And at a certain point, apply some pressure 
and just drag it out like that until it breaks even that's fine <sighs> pull the candle out here it is here's your stretch sprue now that's that's plastic you can pull it taut and it's going to hold up a lot better than the uh, easy line in terms of strength and you can use this all over the ship uh, it's gray you can leave it I like to paint it black to match everything so anyway that's how you make your sp stretch sprue you just cut it off and glue it into place with CA so let's do that uh, we'll go back to you with more of the rigging all right here we go uh, as you can see I put in the two new lines with the uh, stretch sprue now if we come down here hopefully this is where my white background might not pan out so well if you look carefully, you can see that it's pulled down just a little bit below the um, easy line. But generally speaking, it's pretty taut going straight across, which is really pleasing. That's, that's the result we're going for. So next thing to do is paint uh, those black and continue on with the rest of the antennas. Uh, just so you know, let's zoom in here and show you what I did. I just touched some CA glue to the bottom of those antenna platforms right there I glued the easy line there first I just just touched the end let the super glue set up and then I pulled it up put just the tiniest bit of tension on it and I touched each of these points with just a little bit of CA glue and just put the tiniest bit of tension on the line and leaned it up against it and it caught it set up and then I did the best I could to snip it off so that it looks uh, reasonable. So that's how you end up with those lines right there, which I think are pretty good. All right, pressing on. All right, so working in the back here, uh, I've gone ahead and assembled our, put on our stars and stripes. It, it was it's kind of difficult to decide where to put it um, in the configuration. There's lots of options. I'm sure everyone's going to have an opinion down below, but I decided to go ahead and put it on the back here. What I want to point out is this nice curved line you see here that uh, we've attached a flag to. That was accomplished using uh, a piece of stretched sprue. And what I did was I just glued it onto the top first. I left it a little bit long so that when it goes down into the box down here where it would be secured, uh, you ended up with a little bit of a bend. And then of course I went ahead and Touched it with some uh, black paint ahead of time, put a little bit of CA glue on there, and then attached the decal. I had troubles with the decal. If you zoom in, it's a little tattered. It's a little bit roughed up, but I think that's okay because you know, you're going to be seeing it from back here. So we're gonna continue pressing on, getting the rest of this rigging done. I started out on the port side, moved to the middle, and attached these lines, and now I can work on the starboard side uh, yard arm running the lines down there and then we'll press on to the stuff uh, located up here in the front of the ship. All right, press on. Okay, so now that we're back, we finished up kind of what we're doing in the back. We need to start talking about what we're going to do to the front here. So hopefully you can make out on the bottom of this yard arm, let's zoom in a little more, there's photo etch dip there, that, that gray spot right here so according to my reference photos that's actually part of the rigging and this is where the signal flags would be hauled up and they would go down right there into this box and we talked about before here are here's that Ford gun tub that I still haven't finished and looking at one of my reference photos right in here behind the gun I'm gonna call it this lip right there on top of the shelf and this kind of goes forward to the bridge and CIC and everything looks like where the antenna lines would come down to off the forward part of the yard and it looks like they would come down and kind of just droop into right there just swing on up I don't think I can go with a straight line they'll, they'll touch right there so they have to have a little bit of slack so yeah that's the next part we want to work on. Uh, starting with, I think I'm going to start with working back here with the um, signal lines to the box because then I can move to just the front side of the yard arm going forward and I won't have to worry about interfering there. I mean, either way could work. I could start here and go back, but it's just going to be easier to run those 
up and down. So let's start that section and we'll talk about it. Okay, so let's talk about here, and hopefully this doesn't all get lost. I'm gonna try and point everything out. I painted this top photo etch piece right here black. What I'm talking about right there. So this area is black. And then I've attached a line right down here. And that line runs all the way down into our box, the signal box. And you can see uh, it's light gray still. This is sprue. I went with the sprue on purpose in this specific spot because I want to hang signal flags. Now the kit did not come with signal flags. Let's talk about that. All right, this might look a little bit washed out, but here are my signal flags. And as you can see, uh, by the letters, uh, they're backwards and upside down. Actually, these are these are right side up now. How about that? And they're facing the right way. But if I flip this around, they're backwards. Uh, I printed these out on a piece of paper. I found them online, uh, made copies of them, and centered them up so that when I cut them out on thin printer paper, that they, they will line up. Now, these are going to end up being, we'll just fold this slightly so you can see, a little bit small for what probably is realistic, what was really on there. But here's the thing, and this is me. Some of you are going to lose your mind when I say this. Although they won't be super accurate being smaller like this, they will provide a color contrast and they'll look okay. They're actually proportionate with the size of signal flags on World of Warships, which is a video game, and I realize not a representation of real life. But I think that for this kit, it's, it's going to be all right. It's going to be good size. It won't detract too much from the American flag over there, and it'll work out. Also, I have my own little code that I want to hang up, so I'm going to do that. Normally, so these are all phonetic, uh, like, you know, it starts at the top here. Oh, it's a little blurry. I'm, my apologies. Starts at the top here phonetically, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and goes across. They didn't, you only hung those up that way if that's actually... You need to spell something out. That would take a lot of flags. It'd be a big pain in the rear. In real life, you'd hang up like D Delta, just the Delta flag, and that had a code that meant something. Uh, for example, and I don't know which one it is, but one is uh, don't approach. We have a diver in the water. Okay, so there's a flag for diver in the water, don't approach, for example. So anyway, um, what I'm going to do is cut these out, and then very carefully with some CA glue, attach them to my line right here and then I'm gonna once I get my flags hung the rest of them I'll do the lines that I'll run I'll just do with easy line uh, so that they don't have to support any weight that's what we're gonna do here okay so we've got our first line up and now I'm gonna put I've got the next line up and I just want to show you what I'm doing is it's painted black and then we're just gonna apply a little bit of CA glue to the edge, then grab our flag and very carefully attach it like so. I'm right on the edge there, and that's it. And we'll just continue to work our way on down. Um, yep, got, got to put the rest on, but I just want to show you that that's all we're doing, and then we'll run the rest of the lines. Pressing on. Okay, I think we're going to call it a wrap for this segment. Uh, I'm going to try the best I can here to show you all of the rigging that we've put into place, the antennas and the lines. Uh, so in the back of the ship here, we've got our flag. Again, this is a piece of stretch sprue, just bent at an angle. The rest of this is all easy line. I elected not to put any signals in the back. Um, here's our wires going across the top. We'll get a different angle in a minute, but there are six of them. The inside two that are holding the HF antenna wires coming up are stretched sprue. The outside two are easy line. Here's our signals, and this will need some cleaning up, but okay, so the lines running down right here are the signal lines, and then the runs, ones going forward are actually antenna wires. And again, this is speculation because all the photos that I have, get that in focus, uh, show these antenna wires disappearing right there behind this five inch gun. As you can see, there's a, a spot right here for the five inch gun. Um, I do have to be careful 
I wish I had finished this tub before I installed it because you could see that they do bump up against the tub and I wasn't able to basically it would have taken a long time to mask this off, install the photo etch, paint it all up to get it in and, and I wanted to get this segment done. So that's why that's something I'm gonna have to watch out for when I put this in place. I gotta be very careful about stretching these lines. Alright, here are our signals. I'm gonna move to the side here, give you a different angle. Now I understand because someone right away is going to freak out. You didn't do this right. You're supposed to put all the same signals on both sides. I got that. I'm I'm not doing that. I wanted to put up my my own little signal here and uh, you know, extra points for whoever can decipher it. But as you can see cuz we're looking back here, I'll zoom into the starboard side. The flags worked out nicely where both sides of the flags printed exactly where I wanted them to. Uh, up on top, these are all antenna wires. The only one I wasn't exactly sure about is this line. I'm sorry, that this line in here. We'll zoom in. Coming off the mask on that antenna. This line running here down is actually um, a place where you can hang the flag. There's there's a whole bunch of pulleys and things up here that I don't have accurate pictures for. I just I just couldn't find any that showed exactly what was supposed to be what. And I think that the big reason for this is other than generally placing the wires, there were you just installed them as you needed them, I think. Uh, I mean when the ship was originally originally fitted out, they might have had something, but as years go on and you add like these antenna whip wires right here these whip antennas they weren't there until later in the war towards the end of 45 when the ship was first uh, commissioned they didn't have them just had the ones coming up and down right here so yeah anyway I think it looks good let's take a quick peek up on top here alright here's the lines run across the top And this is what we've got going on coming down here in the back. Um, in the front here, so these two lines right here off the end, I think they're actually supposed to be antenna wires. But I have them going down in the signal box. I can't tell for sure. And I think if they are, they come down, they attach somewhere on the deck, but they just the pictures just show them kind of terminating down and ending and it's not clear where they terminate and that's that's really kind of frustrating so anyway that's what we've accomplished I'll flip it around we'll take a look from the other side real quick and then wrap it up okay so here we go on the starboard side Get a look here at our signal flags. Like I said before, in uh, World of Warships, they showed a whole bunch of antenna lines coming off of here, stretching down to the front at different locations above the command section of the ship. There are antenna whips up here, places that it could terminate to, but I could not find any references online or in my books showing that. I don't know if it's just because it's all washed out or if because that's just made up on World of Warships part. Anyway, if you know better or you have a good link, please provide it and comment down below. I would really be happy to go ahead and include them later. I think that would be a really great addition. And last but not least, extra points if you decipher my signal flags in the comments down below. That's it, I think we're gonna call it quits for now. Thank you very much for watching, that's how I rigged the Missouri. And uh, everyone be safe, and we'll catch up with you next time.